eventually, you know, if you just keep it smart, base hits, just those attainable goals, you'll get to that point where you're five years in and you're crushing it, Mm -hmm. you know? Trust me, you don't need a Lamborghini to be respected. What is up, everybody? We are on the Trader Society podcast. We have our co-host, the man, Grant Hardy. What's up? The six-week-in-a-row straight prophet, Grant Hardy, sitting with us today. <laughs> Let's it's go. a beautiful thing. What we want to talk about this week is psychology, the truth behind signals, and what you guys can expect or should expect out of the signals that we do. So, you know, going forward, Grant, you want to talk about what you're doing differently to where you're just making profit. So right now, I'm really only sticking to mainly one pair, right? But I kind of have a wild card in there. And I say pair, but it's oil mainly. I feel like it's extremely easy to trade in the way it plays off a structure is it's just, it's very solid and clear cut. And um, another thing too that I'm doing is if I think I'm wrong, I accept it and I pull out and I just walk away. Mm-hmm. Right. So like I've had some losses in there, but they've been all very minimal. And if I pull out of that trade, literally walk away, I don't even look at that chart again because I'm trying to not second guess myself. And whenever I'm right, I'm right. And if I think I'm wrong and I think that this is about to turn against me because of whatever confluent events or I just get that gut feeling, I pull out and I'm done. I don't go back and look at it and in and out. And then just because like, and I've been trying to practice more what I preach too, right? Because, you know, especially being on here, I said one of the the past podcasts that we did, I said one of the biggest traders that I guess you could take it anyway in life in general is to keep making the same mistakes when you know that they're mistakes. Yes. The, like keep repeating that over and over and thinking you're going to do something different. So whenever I'm able to pull out of a trade, I just walk away and I'm done. I'm done going in and out. I'm sick of losing money. That's what yeah, it came down to. For sure. And just like, like you said, those stupid mistakes that you know you're doing wrong. Right. If you guys can change those, and that's what I've been preaching forever. Like, I remember my first couple years of where like I'd take big losses, but I knew what I was doing wrong when I was taking those big losses. And when you eliminate what you know inside your head you're doing wrong, it makes you a 10 times better trader. And ultimately, I think that that's the step you have to take to become just a trader alone and be profitable week after week after week at least at the end of the month, you're profitable. Right. You know, and that's another good thing thing that you brought up is like, if you close out a trade, like, and it happens to come where you said it was going to go, even though you pulled out, like, right. It is what it is. It is what it is. You you just got to move forward with it. Right. Not, not being in a trade is better than taking a loss. And that's what another thing that I've had to come to terms with. There's so much, understanding that you learn from yourself just by doing this every day and looking at charts that like in the beginning you need that chart time you need to understand but once you understand what you're seeing and doing then you need to master how am I getting in and out of these trades and why am I taking this trade yes exactly I love that um that's one of the things that I have recently discovered like When I'm going into a trade recently, and this is what's been holding me back recently, I'm going into the trade constantly thinking, what if I'm wrong? And eliminating that factor for me has really, really helped me in the past few weeks of like, most of the time I'm going to be right or at least halfway right, where it's going to reject the area I am entering. And eliminating that mindset of like, What if I'm wrong on this one and it just happens to be the time it breaks out and freaking just smashes my uh, stop loss? Eliminating that is a huge thing for me. And it was me like, I don't know how I came to this realization of like, dude, you got to stop thinking that the worst is always going to happen. Right. Because it's keeping me out of trades by doing that. Right. 
that's been a huge thing for me recently. Now, psychology wise, something that's really been helping me as well is that I'm taking screenshots and documenting the trades that I see and think something's going to happen. Whether I take it or not, I'm still documenting where I think the entry is going to be, the take profit, and then I would have my stop loss as well. And just it's it's provided me with like way more confidence by doing this because I am right a lot. And seeing yourself be right and realizing like, okay, this is where the market's going to go to and you have it documented. You can go back and look at it and be like, dude, why am I scared? Right. You know, I already know what I'm going to lose if I'm going to lose. Like not that big of a deal. If you use the proper risk. Exactly. And I always do. Right. So it's like, who cares if I take a 500 to a thousand dollar loss? Like at the end of the day, the next trade I take is probably going to make me to a three K. Right. You know? So right. that's really, really helped me. Right. I love that. Yeah. And you know, I think that that's one of the biggest things. Like everyone's kind of preached like journal your trades. Mm -hmm. At least I've heard it in the industry for the last seven years. Journal your trades. But how many people actually journal their trades? I don't. Yeah. I don't think people really do. And so I'm, I'm taking the initiative to be that person because I want to take it to the next level of, all right, you are an outstanding trader. And why did I become an outstanding trader? Because I took those extra steps of, you know what, calling my own bluff of, dude, you're right a lot. Stop being a pussy about it and just take the damn trade. Right. Right. And that, that goes along too with like, like most of the people that are subscribed to us and they're, they're paying for signals. They're wanting to hopefully learn, you know, not just take signals. And these are the things that we've had to learn over the course. And I'm still very new in all of this. Right. And, but I feel like I'm there and I'm, I'm at that turning point where, you know, I'm not like I could live off of trading alone mm -hmm. if I had to. For sure. And so, and that's really where I want to be at. Right. But hopefully people are learning and they're understanding like why we're not calling, you know, 20 signals a week. Like, I think, I think a lot of people want to hear, Oh, buy this, sell this, buy this, sell this on every different pair. And they just want to be in a bunch of different trades. But that's the thing is that we've had to learn is to not take trades. Right. Exactly. So, so like you may have taken it to the extreme to where you're scaring people out of things, but, or not, but scaring yourself out of things. Yes. Right. But at the same time, that discipline is what has led to your success and your understanding of what's happened. It definitely is. It definitely is. But it can, I, I got to the point just from the switch up that I've had this month. I've, I mean, I've been trading for myself the last six years. You implement something new and it's like, you go back to all those different measures that you had to get through just by trading yourself. And so just like relearning these things about myself, like, dude, I mean, there's been so many trades that I would have taken if it was just me on my own sitting in my office by myself that I've lost out on. I mean, two phenomenal us 30 trade actually three phenomenal us 30 trades that i've missed out on like i knew exactly what was going to happen and did not take the trades and that's my own fault for you know resorting back to those old scare tactics of you know what if it doesn't do this right so that's helped me a lot though of you know like realizing hey dude you're doing that like stop doing that stop right. stop you know Stop uh, lowering yourself and, and what you've accomplished and what you know about trading because you've implemented something new. Right. So, so what is your goal as far as your with trading now? Like er, obviously everyone wants to make more money, but do you have like a profit target that you want to hit every month or do you have like, do you want to build an account? What is your goal as far as, as far as trading goes? So here's the thing, man. If I can take this $10,000 account to $100,000 by the end of the year, that's like kind of my goal right now. Mm -hmm. I've done it before many, many times, but this time is obviously different because it's on a copier. And But if I can just do that, that's my goal. And I know that I can do it. Like 
but it's just me taking those little bit extra risks, getting out of this $10,000 range and just like, you know, cause at, at that point, however much money is connected to this thing, reality, it's like I'm trading a 600, 700, $800,000 account. That's the reality of it. But if I can get this 10,000 to a hundred thousand by the end of the year, January 1st, 2023, then technically I probably made around five to seven million in the market. Right. That's my goal. And it's just, you is, know. Is this the only account that you're trading with right now? Yes. And I made that a goal with myself to do that this year. Is So you put the pressure on. I did. I put myself against a wall. And I'm not always necessarily the best when I do this because I like to just like kind of sink down. And, and when I do get in the wall, I, I get inside my own head. And that's something that I'm trying to get myself out of. Like, dude, get out of your head, bro. Like, you know what you're doing. Like, I can call 10 trades and know at least that's a good entry for I can at least place my stop loss in profit. And there's no reason why I should be scaring myself. Right. So that's my goal. What's what's your goal with trading? My goal? Um, so... When I was at the FX summit, I got up on stage with Anthony and I, you know, told a little story about how I was, you know, I was trading a lot. I took a $30,000 account over six figures, six weeks, ended up blowing the whole thing. I got ahead of myself. I looked at this as like, wow, I'm really starting to understand it. And I got cocky about it and the market will come back and humble you. And since then, over the last year, um, I've blown one account and, uh, I've been able, but other than that one account, um, I've been able to consistently withdraw, you know, pretty much every month, mm -hmm. you know, profits. And I've, I've, I've been trying to look at this as let trading complement your life. Like, like you have to go through stages. You don't just start out, you know, as a race car driver, right? and you're driving NASCAR or Formula One, like there's other things that you're doing before that to get to that level, you know? And I think too many people are trying to compete with what they're seeing on social media instead of really looking in the mirror at themselves and realizing why am I doing this and what can it do for me? So right now, I really, like, if I can take trading and I can pay my bills for the month, or even half of my bills for the month. Like I had a great trading month, mm -hmm. you know? And I think that is, I think I, in the beginning, I got ahead of myself and I was like, I'm going to get rich. I have to flip this. I have to do it. And it's like, whoa, you don't have to do that. Like you can slow down and it's okay. Like, you know, if, if I have a thousand dollar day or, you know, 2000 or a $400 day, like just be done, take it and move on. But the greed will kill you. Like not many people know what it's like to blow a six figure account. <laughs> yeah. It it's, hurts. It's, it's not fun. I'm like, sure. I got screenshots on my phone of being in drawdown of like $66,000, you know, at and that it, point you're just like, nah, no, I can't even look at this. <laughs> can't even look at it, you know, and it, it's not worth the stress and there's levels to the growth of it. And you have to master the level that you're at in order to get, to the next level before you're ready. And I had to realize that. And it takes, it just takes a lot of self-realization and acceptance of where you're at and who you are. This is another thing. I preach this a lot at the uh, FX summit. This industry is based around people that are making three, four, five million dollars a month outside of trading. And you guys look up to these people like they are absolute gods. And the reality of it is, yes, it's easy to risk 50 grand to potentially make 100K, 150K when you know you're still good because you have that three, four, 500K a month coming in no matter what. Right. So I want you guys to acknowledge that and understand that the reality of trading, unless you're a big baller, is like we preached on the last podcast it is those baby steps it is making sure that you can even pay your bills trading right 
And it's not those chasing after those 100K, 200K days. And, and it's not knocking anyone that, that has all that income outside of that. No, right? it's just not the real reality if you are exactly not making that. It's not the real reality of trading. Right. Like like a lot of these people, right, they're not, they're not making $300,000 in a day. And then that's where they bought their Lamborghini from and their mansion that they're living in. Exactly. Like they have other businesses and other things, which is good. And that's what you want to do. It is. Right. 100%. But don't, don't like, I want to be as authentic as possible. Like don't fall for that. Yes. Like you want consistency. You don't want to just run after the first person that you see that, you know, has all of this shit. Exactly. And I'm not talking shit about it. No, either. no, it's, that's the reality of it. Right. And it's just being real. And that's the thing, like, people can hate me, I don't care, like, it's the truth. I guarantee you that, you know, people that are making that income outside of trading, like, it dampers the stress right. of actually having to make money to pay your bills to trade. Right. Like, if you want to be a professional trader, like, dude, you guys have plenty of opportunities right now. I mean, you have these funded account challenges that, like... If you're smart about it and not trying to hit home runs, you can easily do 10% a month, 5% a month, and still make a pretty dang good living where you should be able to pay your bills. For sure. And I talk to people every month that do it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's 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 something that's very doable, but just remember those base hits is what's going to get you there unless you're doing, you know, crazy numbers on the side. Then you can risk, you know, 20K to make a 100K. Right. Like how many accounts did, you know people risk of a hundred grand or 50 grand or whatever to make that $200,000 day. Exactly. You know, they break even to, you know, just Instagram, social media, like don't look at trading as a get rich quick. Look, try and be consistent first. And that, that was my, that was my approach from over this last year. And it's, it's working. And you know, it's about keeping your mind right. Even if you have personal things going on in life, if you have whatever's going on, like keeping a clear head and knowing when to just not trade. Like there was, there's literally like a, I don't know, two weeks there where I didn't really trade at all because I didn't want to. Like, do I want to lose money? There's or, absolutely times in the market where it's like, dude, you just don't want to sit in front of the computer and trade. Like, yeah. And that's one of the great things about trading is that you don't have to, especially when you have a side income as well. Right. Like that's the whole goal that everyone should be trying to reach. Side incomes make trading that extra money. And, you know, at the at some point that extra money is going to become something that is your main source of money if you do it right. For sure. And then you're happy as well because you're making money on the side. Right. You know, so no, it, it just relieves so much stress when it comes to trading by doing that. Right. And like you have to, again, you just have to figure out what you want for yourself. Just because someone else has all this fancy shit doesn't mean that like necessarily you have to want that. Like I think people get lost in the fallacy of I have to get this supercar in this industry. And it's like, Cause I mean, we, I mean, even I do it, I've done it, uh, you know, you know, and you, you, you get there and you're like, okay, like all these people are doing it. They all have three, four, five cars. Why is that something that I cannot do? Right. And it's not necessarily something that I can't do. Like I can totally do it. Um, but I have to have my mind right. And at the same time, like the better trader, the more profits you're actually showing from trading and stuff, that's going to also like build you up as well. Like mm -hmm. it's going to, people are going to, they want to see profits and they want to see big days. And right. at the end of that, like it is what it takes to become an, you know, a, a all-star trader that's, right. you know, has. And, and to prove this even more, we were talking about earlier. I had over 20,000 followers on Instagram at one point, and it's because I was posting, I was making five, eight, ten thousand dollar $10,000 days, you know, every week, you know, while I was, I was doing this, building this account, right? Not to mention I'm doing this while I'm running my old business that I had and working every day doing it. And then as soon as I stopped posting that, 
unfollow, 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 unfollow. And it's like, damn, that's kind of harsh, but all right, that's fine. You know, whatever. I don't want that. I won't want those kind of people to follow me anyways. Yeah. But like, sure. but like, it's okay to slow it down. Like, dude, I haven't even driven the AMG in a month. Uh-huh. It's been sitting in my garage for a month. I haven't even touched it. Um, and it's like, I enjoy my time that I get to go see my son, that I get to be up here, you know, that I get to come in here and play music. And like, I, I appreciate my time more than anything. And that's what trading can do for you. And that's, that's the step. And that's what I'm okay with right now. I'm not in this constant forced growth. I got to get this. I got to get like, like, damn, like I got a family. Exactly. And that's, that's where I'm at too. Like sometimes I forget, like, dude, my house is paid off. I don't know anyone yeah. else that has a paid off house. It's that's uh, epic, by the way. Can, can we get a, <laughs> can we get a And clap? that's not even what I'm asking for. I'm just saying, like, sometimes I forget about, like, everything <laughs> that I have done because I'm not driving the supercars and I'm not flying on private jets. And it's like, but if I look at my life, dude, I have two beautiful kids, a beautiful wife. I get to go home every day after freedom. work and do whatever the heck I want. Like, if I wanted to take the next week off, I could do it, you know, and it's a beautiful life. You can't put a price on your time and freedom. Exactly. You can't. There's there's no price tag on freedom. And I'm not going to dude. I'm not even the type of person to like want to flex that way. No, like I'm really not like I I enjoy cars. So I do want like a sick like whatever car I'm going to get next. Like I enjoy it. But at the same time, like, dude, I'm not even going to flex about it. I'm just going to be me and just live my life and that's something that i want but at the same time like i would way rather spread you do value it, you do it for you not so everyone's loving you because this guy got a lambo i want to do not, i want to right. exactly i want to be able to buy my say, sick car because of the value that i spread to people right like i don't want it to be because some way outside of you know where i'm making all this crazy money elsewhere doing something else like I want it to be because I created actual value for you guys to the point that, you know what, it made me be able to afford that. Right. And it and it comes down to of like calling calling and getting into quality trades, not just getting in and out of the market. Too, yes. Right. And that's not, that's one thing I can't preach enough because I feel like a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know. When, when's the next signal? When's the next signal? Well, when the market presents it, I can call you 20 different trades if you want, but you're probably going to lose most of them. <laughs> like, if you want that, I'll do it. Right. You know, but like, that's not how you get to that point. Exactly. It's the, it's the, the patience and not forcing it. Don't change yourself to appease other people. Right. It's the way I look at it. Like, I'm not going to try to do anything that I wouldn't do for myself. You ain't going to like it anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You're not going to like that. Right. You know, like I love seeing trades that I can absolutely look at it and say, dude, this trade's going to work out. And I've had those trades so many times. And like, those are the trades I called GBP, GBP NZD at the beginning of this week. Mm-hmm. It's perfect trade. There was a 250 crossover, hidden divergence, trend line retest. Beautiful, man. The thing went directly, you know, 96 pips in profit within i think hour and a half like those are the trades where it's like that's what i want to call you so you get that like dude 96 pips that's not Shh. that's just what you call that's not including the trade i called i think exactly Anthony called a really good one exactly like, i think we're up probably 300 pips at least on the week something like week. that yeah. and for us to feel like that's not enough like dude people die for trying to get 300 pips with hardly any drawdown right like that's amazing right you know like to be able to call a trade and it just reverse where you say it's going to reverse and smack tp right there like the best feeling it's the best feeling you know and that's another thing that we try doing it's like we try calling these trades if they don't end up like working out how we expect them to do like we cut it short like cut it, cut short. it quick and it's Put like your stop loss and profit quick like, yep move on to the next one exactly and that's how some of the trades are you know you, you're just gonna maybe i'm taking 10 trades four of those are gonna come back and hit take profit in profit you know it's gonna right. be a break even right 
Um, four of those are going to snap and hit, take profit like crazy and just right off the get go. And then two, you know, we might have small losses. That's right. just like, and that's how you become a good trader is just by managing trades that way. Is, that's how I believe. Like trying to create the least amount of uh, loss as we can. For me, it's learning. Learning to trade was learning when not to trade. Just the, the over trading will kill you. Over and, and especially over the last six weeks, like, you know, if I just make, you know, extra thousand, two thousand dollars a week, like that's a whole other salary yep. from your phone. Exactly. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Dude. Four, eight grand a month, just <coughs> internet clicking a button on your phone. Right. That's great. Right. Like that's easy money. So if you can learn how to do it <coughs> properly and just like take those baby steps, like eventually you're going to get five years in and start to be like, all right, dude, I've got a $300,000 account. I can make, you know, maybe, be, maybe 5% a week and call it good. You're mm -hmm. good that way. You know, you don't have to do anything else than that. Right. The greed will, you'll end up not trading because of the greed. Like you will give up. Like blow, like if you blow a six figure account and like most people can never say they've done that mm -hmm. or even be able to be like, oh yeah, I did that and my life didn't change, you know? Yes. Right. That's another thing. So to be able to, to be able to do that and go through that experience, it's okay to slow it down. <laughs> like it's okay. It, like if, if you have a problem with slowing it down, think that you need to, you know, like, no, I have to do it like this. I, you know, I have to, I have to be competing with this guy over here posting, you know, him driving in his new Lambo, whatever. Like you need to look in the mirror and reevaluate yourself for exactly. sure. Exactly. Reevaluation in that scenario. And like I said, I've been there. Like I hang around people who have everything you could ever want in life. For and sure. it does, it tricks your mind into like, why do Wait I not second. have this too? Why, am, why do I not have that? Why can't I go do this? Why can't I, you know, make all this happen right now? It's just not my time. I didn't take some risks maybe, and I'm not there. It's fine, but I'm going to keep working on it, and I'll get there. Yeah. And, and that's just all you can do. You can just better yourself every day. Continue, continually put the goals that you want to get accomplished in your mind, write them down, whatever you have to do, just make sure you're working towards those goals every day. And eventually if you don't give up, you're going to do it. I also don't really believe in like huge astronomical goals either. No. People are like, Oh, I want to do this and have, you know, $20 million in my account or have a $20 million business in, you know, the next year. Mm -hmm. And it's like, does it happen? Could it happen? Yes. But like set goals that you can reach every day and then you will have that $20 million business, whatever you want, whatever it is, you know, setting realistic goals is a good way to achieve what you want overall because then you're not disappointing yourself. Exactly. And other people. Exactly. I love that, man. That's a, that's actually a great way to think about it. Like just set those Set a goal that's going to get you to the next step to the maybe ultimate goal that you exactly. want to get to. Exactly. You know, like maybe, hey, like I want to make 20K a month or, you know, even 10K a month. Like that's what I want to make with my business. That's a goal that's attainable. It's doable with everything that's in the Internet. And it's doable if you if you try to go out there and find it. It really is. And setting that small goal of, hey, I need to make 10K a month and working your way up to that point where you actually do it. And then, Hey, you get to 10 K a month. You can set another goal, right? I'm going to, I want to make, I want to turn this into, you know, 15, 20 K a month. Right. But if, if you start from nothing, you're like, I want to make, I want to make $1.2 million next year. Let's just put a weird number. $1.23 million next year. And then you come up short and you only made 150 grand, right? Like you're just going to disappoint yourself and get discouraged. So, Having having the proper the proper things align to follow through on is really important to yourself. Oh. And, you know, to other people too. Because next thing you know, like you want to do that and then you have this astronomical goal and this number 
and then other people are counting on that, relying on it maybe, and then you just let other people down. So consistency and being realistic, I think, is really what people want and what they deserve. Yes. And that's my goal with Trader Society and trading in general is like setting those realistic goals and really calling good trades. Exactly. Calling good trades and teaching people like real authentic right. truth when it comes to trading. You know what? I'm going to continue to do that. I'm going to always preach that that's what I'm going to do. And some will like it, some won't. But ultimately, it's going to get to get me, you to the point that we want to be. Right. And, you if know, it works. It works. Exactly. It don't matter. Just because maybe someone else has traded with more money and they've made more money doesn't doesn't make it it doesn't disregard the fact that what we're doing isn't working. If it works and you can bring that value, then everything else will come along. Exactly. And like I've been at the point where I'm like, dude, 150k isn't much money. Right. It's like I gotta get out of that mindset because 150k internet money is a lot of money i don't care it, it really is it's a lot of money like for me i'm like oh dude i gotta be making two million a year to you know be where i want to be and then i look back it's like bro just take it step right. by step you don't need two million like you'll get there but at the same time don't be displeased with 150k right. you know like if i make 150k this year trading Dude, I just made 150k pressing buttons. Right. That's and that's incredible. not your only income. Exactly. You know. Right. So it's it's a beautiful thing. At the same time, having that self realization of you don't have to make millions every month. That's fine to not be at that point. Right. And just you know, like you said, those attainable goals. I want 300k a month. Mm-hmm. I want 500k a month. You know, just work your way up. To I I even said at, at the FX summit when I was up up there, I was like, like if you can just pay your power bill, that's 150 dollars, and that's where you're at. Do it and pay your power bill. Yes. Stop stop trying to overachieve because you will blow your account. Mm-hmm. I know because I've done it. Yes. <laughs> Like <laughs> yes. everyone's done it, but I feel like not enough people talk about this. Oh, I know. It, and that's the sad part is that people lose <laughs> accounts like crazy, but they have that money to, you know, just keep oh. it rolling here. I'm going to, I'm going to risk 50 K to make a hundred K. You know, I, I may lose this three times, but you guess what? I'm going to show you that hundred K day. Uh-huh. I'm down actually 50 K, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Think about it, guys. That's all I'm saying because the reality of it is traders do not, 95% of traders is what they say fail. Mm-hmm. And I think that comes from them quitting because they just blew so many accounts. Right. And they're like, you know what? I can't I'm afford gonna, to. I'm going to show this, these demo profits. <laughs> <laughs> I can't afford to uh, lose any more money. Yeah. So I got to I gotta cut the cord and just get out of here. Yeah. But eventually, you know, if you just keep it smart, base hits, just those attainable goals, you'll get to that point where you're five years in and you're crushing it, Mm -hmm. you know? Trust me, you don't need a Lamborghini to be respected. No. 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 And and in the reality of it, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It's cool. It's cool. Everyone wants that as far as like, but the feeling that you get after two weeks of driving it, it's like. You're just the same person you were before you had it. I haven't touched the bins in a month. Yeah, like, exactly. And it's cool. It's cool. It's fun to drive to the golf course. You know, it. it's fun to drive down Scottsdale Road. And it's, right. you know, people turn their heads. But at this point, it's like, I don't even know why I have it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, you just need to put it on Toro. Put it on Toro. Make Is club. that the risk? Is that worth the risk? You know, what's the risk to reward there? Like. Yeah, you could do some hefty damage. I don't know how that works out, but you know, I just rag out your car. That is what you're risking. Yeah. Or just sell it and like, you know, this is what I like to think about it. Like, yeah, you go down that car, but you go back into your house at the end of the day and you fall asleep on your pillow and, you know, you don't feel any different than you did after you park it in your garage. Right. You know, it's no. cool. But it doesn't define or change me. Yeah.
nothing I own defines me. Exactly. You know, and it shouldn't. So I guess the message is, is don't fall for the bullshit. <laughs> don't <laughs> fall for the bullshit, baby. You know? Just like be real, be, be authentic real. and just baby steps. Like work hard every day, better yourself, learn where, what you're doing wrong and the areas that you're trying to improve, improve and just knock out those things that, that are holding you back. Right. It's good to be hard on yourself, but don't beat yourself up because you're not where someone else is at. Yeah, and definitely don't put yourself in a situation where, you know, you are putting your livelihood at risk. Right. And that's what I think a lot of people do right. as far as, like, trying to hit those home runs. You got 20 grand saved, do not put it all into a trading No, account. definitely do not. Work your way up. Yep. People are like, well, I'm ready to start trading. What should I do? Deposit $100. <laughs> and trade pennies. <laughs> yes. That's where Either you start. that or demo account, whichever you prefer, but yeah, you're going to lose that hundred dollars. You're going to lose it. <laughs> and uh, you're not only going to trade penny, you're going <laughs> to up that lot size. It is a thrilling feeling to make your first money by clicking that button. Mm -hmm. it's, it's thrilling. It's beautiful. Um, but doing it right is ultimately the, the goal that we're trying to portray to you so that you guys don't do the stupid mistakes that we made right before having somebody told tell us this so yep. with that being said we hope you guys enjoyed this show today i know that i enjoyed this one uh and make sure that you comment subscribe like follow us on instagram trader society grant what's your instagram it's uh underscore grant hardy and then i am derek underscore vandy and uh, we will see you guys if you're in the trader society we have the course coming baby we're excited very excited about this because it's been a long time in the works um but we got some fun stuff for you guys and we're excited about it so that being said we appreciate you and we'll see you guys next week